The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look here at this German DAX. You can see we've completed that big ABCD pattern up here near the one point or point six one eight level. And uh, that is certainly a completed pattern. The next one we're going to look at, of course, is the uh, FTSE and is uh, you can also see that we uh, completed that several days ago as we pointed out just a few days ago and that one also should start uh, to come down. Now I wanted to uh, just go over what happened yesterday in these markets because we had a really big move here early in the morning. Uh, if you like garlic patterns uh, this is what happened. This is the E-mini S&P. You can see yesterday uh, we made a beautiful ABCD right down at right near that 61% retracement at 29. Um, uh, 29. The low was uh, 29, uh, 27 and a half. And from there it rallied 30 handles. And you can see we've completed an ABCD pattern on this based on what happened, you know, with uh, Apple's earnings. And so uh, that is certainly a completed pattern. The other one that we'd like to take a look at, of course, uh, is the NASDAQ. And I think it's an, another interesting one that we need to look at uh, for two reasons. Let's just get the first reason up here. And you'll see here the same thing in the NASDAQ yesterday. We'll see. Uh, there's a possibility of the double top. I believe so, uh, uh, Marshall for a lot of different reasons that I covered in the uh, newsletter. Here again, the um, NASDAQ made a perfect 61% retracement down at that 4740 level, and then we went up. Remember in the morning, we were looking at that level of the 382 rally, and we dropped from 382, we went from 7815 down to 7740, and that was the ABCD completion of that move. It's very, very clear. And then from there, it went straight up, and you can see we've made another top up in here, possibly. Now, I wanted to expand on that just a little bit uh, because I think it's in an area where it's going to be uh, very, very interesting. And uh, the one thing that I do want to do, and I will do it, and I, I thought I'd <laughs> – here it is. I thought I had these lined up so perfectly today. Anyway, um, we'll take a look at this here. We'll move this up here and uh, get a little look here and see what we got. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Just give me a second, folks. There we go, folks. Here is the here's the Nasdaq where we were. Um, we went right back to that 78% level, folks. That dark black line there. That's the 135 pattern that uh, Bill uh, Longstreet and his and his and his uh, his dad Roy uh, spent a lot of time on. So that's interesting. That's a divergence, folks, because the S&P went a tad higher. Uh, the, the also the Dow went just a little bit higher too, and that's all on the emotionalism of Apple because. You know, everything is good in Kansas as long as Toto is in the basket. All right, let's watch that very, very closely because I think we have Fed Day today, so it's always going to be a little wild, but uh, I still believe we're in an area of uh, moving down. There is a um, it, one other interesting pattern here that I think is uh, important for the precious metals. I wanted to bring this up to you. Um, this is the uh, platinum. The, this platinum chart is not updated, and let me explain to you uh, where, where it was trading at 887 just a little while ago, but I believe we got a chance to get down to that 880 level one more time, um, and I, that's what I'm looking for, and possibly we're trading around, what, uh, 8, 887, I believe. I believe we could get down there one more time, and that would be an interesting one to look at, but if we go below that 887, 880 level, that would not be good, because that would be uh, breaking that support line that's there. So we'll see if that's, uh, if that's going to uh, get to that level. So those are just a few of the things that we're looking at here this morning. Uh, remember, today is Fed Day. I get 2 o'clock Eastern time. They'll be playing their usual games. And remember, the Fed is out there trading quite a bit. So pay close attention. Now, I want... 
<clears throat> I wanted to run through a few of the things that we've looked at here in the past. Uh, one of them here is this hog market. We talked about it possibly uh, backing off one more time. And we're down near this level again, and uh, we, we really need to hold this level uh, between between 86 and 88. You can see that dark blue line there at that 85.50 level. That's a similar to that line that we have in the platinum because that acts as support. But uh, it's very, 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 very important to, in these hogs and cattle both because we've been uh, bearish cattle for quite some time. And now they're just hanging there. Look, you can just see here, they're just staying here at right near that really key level that we talked about, which is uh, that 111. You know, we've been here, uh, we're looking at 111.75. It should hold that 111 area in the cattle, whether it's going to or not. Uh, I don't know, but the good part is nobody else does either. Folks, let me take just a minute, and I'll probably expand on this in the second part of this uh, program today, and that is uh, one of the really bad things that happens to you as a trader is when you have these uh, tremendous losses. Folks, it's not the money. It's not the money that you're losing when you have a big loss. Is You're losing your trader spirit, and that's the thing that really kills you. As Roy Longstreet said, the first mistake teaches, the second mistake kills. And that's the usual difference between a neophyte trader and a professional because the professional will see that mistake and take care of it. If you have those big losses every day, folks, it's just like, oh, it's terrible. I've been through, I've done this. You know, that's how I learned how to read the Gartley book and all that other stuff back in 1975 and 70, uh, 74, 75. Uh, that that that's what I did. I studied the the books that I needed to, the reminiscences of a stock operator, which I've read more than fifty times, and going over the Gartley book. But the it's not the loss. The loss is baloney. It's the it's the breaking of your spirit, and that's what hurts. It pre pre prevents you from looking at other things, and you've you've always you know you're always looking at that, and that's terrible. The other thing is, if you ever get a margin call for something, let's say you have several positions on, and you get a margin call. Let's say you're long silver and it's going down and you're, you're long uh, soybeans and wheat and they're going up. And what most people do is when they get a margin call, they get rid of the one that's making them money. They keep the loser. It's amazing. When Mark Douglas did his work with all the accounts, 10, more than 10,000 accounts from Merrill Lynch, he went over those one at a time and categorized them. And you could see that the people that had these humongous losses, those were the ones uh, that it blew up. I mean, it was just totally amazing. The people that had small losses along the way, they they turned around faster than the ones that had these big losses. So if you got these big losses, you know, try to keep away from it because those are the ones. There's a great rule for this, folks, uh, that I that I found, uh, and it it's saved my bacon pretty much, uh, and that's a lot of bacon, if you might add. It, is is if you ha if you've got a loss after three days. Uh, these patterns usually work right away. And if you've got a loss after three days, you're probably wrong. So just get out of it on the on the opening of the fourth day. And that's really, you know, really all you have to do. That'll protect you from having anything really bad. I mean, if you're in something for a month or two months or three months and it's eating you alive, man, you're, you're, that's suicide. You don't want to do that. I mean, get, get out of it. You know, release the pressure and move on to... To do something that you can able to do because that that's what you really need to do you got to be able to do the right thing very good ruby you're absolutely right 877-927-6648 the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're taking a look here at the U.S. dollar index this morning. We've been watching that, of course, because of the movement that we saw in the euro with that three drive pattern. We've now backed off uh, about as much as should be expected uh, on this particular pattern. Anything below the uh, 90, uh, 96.75 level would certainly tell us that we're probably made some type of a major top up here in the U.S. dollar. I don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, we've had a nice rally in the euro, which we were certainly uh, expecting because, you know, we were right down there with that three drive to a bottom pattern occurred. And here again, you had a pretty nice move. Uh, we're trading at 112.35 uh, or so right now. So it's actually held up pretty good. So I think we're, we're, that shouldn't be much any higher than where we've been now. This should be it in the euro if it's going to start going down. Uh, let's, uh, okay, someone's asking a question. The, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, he's, uh, Mr. Z is asking a question that I'll have to answer. And, oh, he's, I might as well answer it right now. He's asking a question about the artificial intelligence. It's basically, it's not based on, um, it's not based on price at all, Mr. Z. It's based on time. It's a vibration. It's like a harmonic or a vibration that's in the market, and it's all time related. It has nothing to do, nothing to do with price. In fact, they it's named after the it was called the Tomahawk uh, neural net. But what it really needs is the fact that we had a, a situation where the market would uh, take the, the the rocket would come out of the submarine. Okay, the the Tomahawk ro rocket would come out of the submarine, and then after it's out of the water is when it's programmed to head for its uh, for its um, uh, target, and that target is based on a a pattern that they found. From uh, from vibrations, and that's really what it's uh, what it's all about. So it's all time related. It has nothing to do with price. That's why it's a little difficult to do it. I've been trying to find someone to help me program the doggone thing for w quite a while, and I have not had any luck. But we'll see what's on. There are two big points today. There was one right just about uh, nine o'clock. There's another one at 12 o'clock Eastern time. That's the big one in the S&P and the Nasdaq. Uh, that's the big one to look at uh, that could could be happening. We've got Fed today, so you know they're going to be out there playing their usual games. So we'll see what's happening. Uh, Dave uh, David White was nice enough to post some really great quotes from uh, Jesse Livermore's book about uh, 
using losses and stuff, but he posted, this is from Livermore himself, he said, a loss never bothers me after I take it. I forget it overnight. But being wrong, not taking loss, that's what does damage to the pocketbook and to the soul, Jesse Livermore. And that's when I said it damages the trader's soul, folks. It really does. Don't take those big losses. Use the three-day rule. It's that simple. You know, or yeah, he'll use a twenty use a twenty day moving average or something. But get out of it if you're if it's not working after about three days. Someone's asked me to comment about moving averages and oscillators like the MACD that was uh, done by uh, Gerald Appel. All of those are lagging indicators. Uh, they're helpful. Uh, if you have someone like Steve Rhodes and uh, Basil Chapman that are experts in using these, then that's, they're really great. But standalone, they don't work very well, folks. I worked at Commodity Corporation, and we had the best data bank in the world, and they tested everything. And those things by themselves do not work very good. But when you put them together with a volatility breakout of some kind, then you've got something that is really worth something. Uh, Amos Hostetter built a program that was sold to uh, Goldman Sachs. They bought, uh, uh, you know, uh, Commodity Corp many, many years ago, mainly to get that program because it was a volatility breakout program. When the market was in a certain area and all of a sudden it popped up above us, a certain level that was telling you that it was time to get on the horse and ride it. One of the ways of doing that that was done was the fact that they used um, uh, standard deviations from the mean like with the uh, average true range. In other words, if it went so many standard deviations beyond the mean, then that was something. I could show you an example of that, I guess, if I could probably pull it up, but maybe I don't. Uh... Hold on one second. Maybe I, that would be interesting to look at. This will only take a second, folks. Just bear with me just a moment, and we will try to get this darn thing up here to take a look at it. And it won't take very long, I don't believe, because I've got it in Dropbox. And if I can just put the search engine in and see it the right way, bada-bing, bada-boom, by golly, I did something right. Shut the front door and raise the rent. 43 more days, folks. We're going to have a new little, uh, uh, a new little trader in the family. We're going to have another little baby boy. Sarah's uh, son is going to have a grandson. Let's take a look at these average true ranges. Let me just show you the type of thing that this was done with. Hold on, you'll be able to see here. Now, the Bollinger bands are nothing more than Keltner bands. Charles Keltner did that work, and Bollinger put his name on it uh, a year later, but they're exactly the same uh, situation. There's standard deviations from the mean. That's what you're looking at here, but when this one, what you're looking at here is you're looking at a situation where you are looking at three standard deviations, uh, and that's uh, very, very important. Uh, but that's what it is. It's that's where the volatility breaks out of those things. You'll notice the first time it breaks out. Look back on on Jan in January of 2019, folks, how crude oil popped above those gray lines. That was telling you the trend to change, and it's been changing. You know, every time it goes above those lines, it pulled back for a buy. I mean, it, it, we just did it recently. So those are the. That's the kind of thing that they worked on. Oh, they did it thousands of these things. I mean, there's just a lot of them. So we'll see how these things end up here. But uh, that, remember, try not to have those big losses. They they hurt. They hurt the soul, and that and that prevents you from from trading. See, because you won't take the next trade because you're we're, you're worried about it. You know, and that's it. You know, the 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 ones that really hurt you. Let's say you have a fifty thousand dollar account. If you have a fifty thousand dollar account, and you've lost twenty thousand dollars in something. You've really screwed up big time. If you have a $50,000 account and you've only dropped $5,000, yeah, you get your hands banked, but you're okay. So anything beyond 20% of your equity on any one trade is no good. That's not because it just takes you too long to get that back. So try to remember that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get on my soapbox because I've been on that box before and it's, uh, it's no fun. So. Keep an eye on it anyway. We'll watch it as we go through. Okay, the next one that I wanted to cover, of course, is the uh, Canadian, uh, well, the British pound, because we're having a big move here in the British pound. Uh, we talked about buying this here uh, several 
Well, it's been well over a week or so now. Now we're trading up near 131 already, folks. This is up, uh, you know, well over $1,000 now. So uh, you certainly want to lock in some profits at that level. I think we're going to go still go higher, but at this level we could run into a little bit of resistance. So, you know, the risk on this trade was only about $250. It's made four times that in just a matter of five days. So that's pretty much you know, what you're looking at as far as uh, what you're trying to, to spot out today is to maybe start taking some profits. And remember, we have the Federal Reserve in there, so they'll be doing their, their usual shenanigans. In, in also, we have, uh, you know, this is uh, what we call a, a Golden Week, but nothing has happened. Here we are in the 1st of May. We're halfway through Golden Week, and uh, nothing, uh, nothing has really happened, you know. That's right, David. David has posted some great things from uh, Mark Douglas. Anything can happen, and you don't need to know what's going to happen next in order to make money. And you that think about that. You don't know what's going to happen next, and you never will. You don't know what the future is. And remember, there's a random distribution between wins and losses on any given set of variables. And that's what we're trying to do. And the edge is nothing more than a higher probability of one thing happening or another. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, someone asked a question about what I'm looking for in a program, or this is a, the forecast for the natural gas for today, very actively traded market. And as you can see, we were looking for a bottom to come in here about uh, 15 minutes ago. We rallied up, and it looks like it has a bias to the downside. 
what I was trying to do was to find someone who could mathematically line up that blue line with the prices so that as long as it's running along that line, it is following the program. Because once it starts to flip, and it does flip, but not back and forth each time, but it'll flip maybe once a day, uh, making it an inversion. But it's just a little difficult to, to find someone. I've tried it three times over the past oh, seven or eight years. No one's ever been able to do it. Let's move on to something else here. Uh, the blue line is the uh, is the forecast. It's the timing forecast. In other words, it's saying from the time that right we are now that the uh, natural gas should be going down into the next hour and a half and then have a little hour and a half rally. But with the bias on the day is still to the downside. That's basically what it's doing. Nothing to nothing to do. It's just an it's just an artificial intelligence neural network. David, if you drop me your an email, I'll explain it to you a little better. I, you know, I've already got your email, David. I'll just send it on to you. Uh, anyway, that's uh, it's a good tool. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just just like anything else. It's all based uh, on probability. Here was the forecast this morning uh, early for the uh, E-mini S and P. And as you can see, we're going to have some really wild uh, rock and roll times around uh, Fed time. And it didn't, do, it didn't know anything about Fed time. Believe me, this is just based on, on timing. Okay, let's move on to a couple other the currencies that I think uh, we need to uh, pay uh, close attention to. Uh, we've already looked at that dollar index. We've already seen what the euro is doing. We need to look at the uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, as you remember, this was the weekly chart that we were looking at. Uh, last week we posted that and then uh, what we want to do now is to update this on a daily so that we can see this Canadian dollar because it is uh, at the proverbial moment of truth now folks if you look at this you'll be able to see here that we've had these moves and we just had <coughs> excuse me we just had a 61 percent pullback down here at this 130 uh, 390 level that should hold it and uh, should be heading up to this 136.40. But with the Fed in there today, you know, anything can happen. So, you know, you've got to be able to protect yourself. Remember what happened with the, what Japan did on January the 4th with their bank robbery. You know, you don't want to get involved with one of those things. And being, uh, you know, golden week, you know, and the Fed at the same time, that's going to be really uh, – wait till the, wait till the Fed's done – done with their thing and let the market tell you what direction it wants to go is what I would be looking at. So we'll see, you know, what's going on. I don't know what the Fed is going to do. All I know is that long term, these interest rates, folks, they're going to go down. I mean, this is a very, very bearish uh, chart. Here is Treasury bonds going back. Uh, they topped in uh, July, June of uh, 2016. Uh, we've been down and we've rallied now. This is one of our longer rallies since uh, November of last year. And uh, it's still very, very negative. In order for this thing to be bullish, we'd have to move 15 handles uh, in the Treasury bonds. And uh, that would be a uh, that would be very interesting. So <laughs> whether we can do that or not, you know, I'm not sure. That high that we made, in 2016, folks, was a 32-year high. The bull market in bonds started in in August of uh, uh, two, uh, 1982, I believe, with the uh, statement from Henry Kaufman uh, from uh, uh, from Fiber at the time. Anyway, this is going to be um, this is a major major bear market in bonds. Interest rates are going to go higher. The question is when. What I what I would like to know is what history is going to say about these people that say that negative interest rates are, are normal. I mean, that does not make any, any, uh, any, any interest to me at all, how interest rates could be normal. Now, what, what, the, what they are doing in the government, which you're, I'm certainly aware of, is that they're, they're, they want to go to a cashless society, folks, because you get to a cashless society, A, two things happen. One, no more counterfeiters. There can be hacking, of course, but there's there's no need to counterfeit anything. But you're also going to be tied to the uh, electronic age, and that's going to be a problem possibly. But uh, they'll be able to know exactly what you are. Why? Well, they already know what you're buying anyway. But they'll know exactly where you are at any time and what you're spending and why and all the money is where it's going. So Big Brother is here to stay. That's what that's what we hope uh, blockchain uh, technology and cryptocurrencies are going to help 
protect that because uh, it's open access, supposedly, something like that. I don't really know. That's, again, over my pay grade. But I don't trust the government very much. I never have. But, uh, you know, anytime Big Brother – what was it? I think it was uh, – David White will know this for sure, which I think it was any uh, – it might have been uh, the smartest dude of all, which was Thomas Jefferson. Any government that can give you anything can also take it away, something like that. Was that it, David? I'm sure you've got your your little uh, library thing there to tell us exactly what the quote was. But it's something uh, along those lines, and it's, uh, it's quite true. So – Pay a close uh, attention to that. Uh, folks, let's talk just a shade here about the grain market. We have a big move in wheat going right now. And last time I checked, it was up about 13 or 14 cents. Uh, corn was acting uh, was acting pretty good, actually. We'll put up the corn chart. You'll be able to see that it also has made that double bottom and has been able to uh, you know, move a, a little bit higher. The, the soybeans and the... And the um, um, what do you call it? Uh, shut the front door. The meal and stuff are still uh, in a low level, but I think we're getting ready to make a bottom in them. I'm waiting to see what happens with this new moon that we have here uh, coming up on on Saturday, which is uh, going to be a real interesting, uh, real interesting one to uh, pay attention to. Okay, let's move on to another one of the uh, futures. Um, yeah, but who said that, Terry? Who was the president that said that? Uh, I thought it was uh, Thomas Jefferson, but I don't know exactly. I've got a book full of that stuff, but I don't have time to, to look at it right now. Okay, hold on. I wanted to cover one other thing, and that is this Australian dollar. I believe we're, we're trading. We had a little bit of a bounce here in the Australian dollar, but to me, I believe we're heading down to that 69 level. That's about 150 pips from where we are right now. That would complete an ABCD. The important thing that to watch on this chart is that head and shoulders pattern uh, has been broken, folks. Actually, if you see the trend line that was the black trend line that from where the shoulder is, the right shoulder came in around 7,100. Once we broke below that with that wide ranging bar, that really told you that head and shoulders pattern was no longer valid. And it looks like we want to go lower. We're having a little bit of a bounce. Not much of a bounce for sure, but there's a tiny bounce here in the Australian dollar this week. And I think we'll be heading down again, you know, very, very shortly. The key figure uh, to watch in the Euro, of course, is the one um, one eleven? Uh, that's not one one twelve fifty. If we get above one twelve fifty in the euro, it could have a possibility of having some legs, but it's still uh, you know a little bit early uh, to uh, decide whether that's going to be happening or not. Still, still early. That's uh, the main thing. Okay. Um, See, I think that's about it. Okay, we've got a break here. 877-927-6648. We'll cover all Apple when we get back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when 
and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your gold report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, um, I'm going to put up this chart. I believe I put the chart up for Apple. I hope I did anyway. Let's double check to see if I did. Um, this is a very important thing to remember now, folks, okay? What you want to do is whenever the market's going to gap up, you want to be long, and if the market's going to gap down, you want to be short. That's very important to understand that. Remember, so if the market's going to gap down, you want to be short, and if the market's going to gap up, you want to be long. Now, the key to this is, how do you know whether it's going to be up or down? And the answer to that is no. And that's where the art of speculation comes in. We've had a big run here. Now, the one that I'm watching most of all, and it's acting, this is the, this is a, this is softy. I know it's, a, you know, we all use softy, or most of it. Anyway, you'll notice that that high we made there at 131.57, um, you know, we're only trading at 129.89 today. We've not taken out that high. And that's a 1.618 expansion on the weekly chart. That's the big ABCD. That means a lot to me anyway. And so that's why we're watching it. Remember, I started this whole week with the uh, bearish idea that uh, this was going to be a potential uh, reverse point wave in the uh, NASDAQ. And so far, nothing has changed that. I mean, the S&P has gone a little above. Uh, where I thought it was going to, and the Dow also, but not the NASDAQ. So, And the NASDAQ has been the weaker one. So I don't know if it's right or not. All I'm saying is it's close. And, you know, that's what we'll see. Whether it be waiting for this lunar thing or not, you know, I'm not sure. So we'll be able to see. Uh, there it is. It is Thomas Jefferson. I was correct. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Terry, for posting that in there. I thought it was Jefferson. I've got a little book here of all of his quotes, but uh, one of my favorite things is when uh, uh, John Kennedy was having a meeting at the White House, and there was all kinds of smart people in the room, and he said, there hasn't been this many this much brain power in this room since Thomas Jefferson dined alone. And hold on, folks. Uh, something is beeping on the old thing, and that is platinum. Uh-oh. Folks, we've got a interesting situation now. Platinum has just broken through. Let's uh, let's stop the presses, shut the front door, and raise the rent. Let's see what's going on with the platinum here because we have just broken through that key level. Let's get it up here, and it is beeping like crazy. And uh, they just filled me just now, so I has got to put a stop in. I just bought it at 877. Let's bring this up so you can take a look at it. We're right at that black line, boys and girls. You can't let it get any lower than this. And if it gets to 74, I am taking my $150 loss and uh, moving on, 
hoping to pick a nice winner in the Kentucky Derby. And everybody should be looking at the horse that is listed as number two. His name is T-A-X. Pay attention to that horse, folks. He's got a shot. And it will be about 40 to 1. All right. This is a very important here. I bought it at 877. I did it for myself. I didn't do it for the service because it's a little too wild. But we did get there. We, If we close below, uh, well, it's 870. Well, I'm gone already. There's my $150 donation to Platinum. So, And the, the, the uh, gold is what? Moved a dollar and a half. So that's neither here nor there. But I, I'm out. It's trading at 874 right now. And so that's okay. Move on to the next one. The S&P is working all right. Anyway, let's move on to one other one that we want to look at. Uh, I'm glad that happened right during the hours. You can see uh, what's what's going on and uh, seeing. Uh, I, I didn't want to risk that much, uh, uh, Ruby, on that because I really felt that it had to hold 877. I didn't want to risk more than a buck and a half. I had a couple other things going really good today, and I just didn't want to uh, didn't want to mess with it. But we'll see. You know, it still could be okay, but that's it, not what you'd like to see. And silver is, uh, yeah, you do it all the time, Maria. You do the live trading. And Mr. Z, we appreciate all the stuff that you guys do. You know, it's not about the money that you make. It's the amount of money that you lose. Keep those losses small, boys and girls. You'll be far, far better than uh, if you sit there on your hands as something keeps going down and down and down and down and down. Remember, folks, when the market goes down, you got to remember, first, it's goodbye house, goodbye car, goodbye boat, goodbye wife, you know. <laughs> I hadn't had that happen before, but uh, anyway, let's move on to uh, one other of the, of the uh, uh, ones that I want to look at here today, and that is the uh, Japanese yen. Uh, what well, we had this level here at the 112 level in the Japanese yen as we came into the um, golden week. We've now backed off. We didn't get any higher than that 112 level. We've backed off very meagerly. We're trading at 111.32, so this is still a possibility we can break out of that to the upside. And so with the golden week here and the Fed messing around today, you know, anything could happen because uh, we get above 112, this thing could really go, and below 110, it could really go either way. So it's in a really tight trading range. And the Fed today is at 12 o'clock. Don't forget that. That's a, that's an important thing uh, to remember. So we'll uh, keep that in mind as we as we look at some of these uh, some of these other things that we're watching here. So let's uh, see what happens, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, I let's see how low did we get on the platinum? We got down. To, oh, very nicely. 873.90. My stop was 874. It's now back to where I bought it at 877. Well, it's actually up a buck, but I didn't want to risk more than that, folks. I, frankly, I'm on the air here, and I don't like to actually do that but i wanted to nibble at it that maybe was a too close to stop but that's neither here nor there maybe i'll buy it again right now and then put a stop below i'm not sure whether i'm going to do that or not click i already did it so i bought it at 878 and a half and i put my stop another buck and a half so now i'm going to risk 300 dollars, and that's it so we'll move on to the next one here okay Let's see if we can take a look at the British pound again. We're up at 130.70. Uh, that is uh, just about two handles from the top. That's $1,200, folks. You want to be booking some profits here in the British pound if you bought it down there that we talked about because uh, that was a beautiful uh, what uh, you know thing looking at, and we'll see. Uh, someone's asking a question about Fed day. If, folks, I trade all the way up to Fed time and then after Fed time. I don't like to. I don't like to be... Uh, in the markets during Fed time because they're um, <laughs> they're there to make money, folks. They don't have to report to anybody, so they can do whatever they want. So I don't like to trade during Fed time. Right after Fed time, I will because liquidity dries up around that time, right around 2 o'clock. Everybody that's got any brains wants to stand aside to see what they're going to do because they're in there to make money for themselves, folks. You know, that, that thing about being helpful to us is all a bunch of baloney, so we'll see. Uh, coffee's trying, Bob, but it hasn't really. It really needs to get above that area, and then uh, you know, then it's got a pretty good chance. So, pay close attention to it. So we'll see if that's going to be uh, correct or not. All right, let's move on. We've got uh, oh boy, the phone lines are so busy today. Thank gosh, so folks. I'm sorry if you couldn't get through today because uh, these lines were just absolutely jammed. And uh, we'll maybe catch up tomorrow. Remember, to Friday is Happiness Day. 
because we get Norman, who calls it to the minute, Winsky will be our guest on May the 3rd. And we have a new moon coming in. Uh, we'll be able to see. Okay, Mr. Z is asking about, I'm trading August cattle. Uh, the main reason is, is that I like August cattle. And I, you know, it's down here. I'll post the chart for you, Mr. C. I don't know. As long as it stays above 111, I think it's got a chance. I don't know where it's trading right now. But uh, where is, oh, I took it off already. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Yeah, um, that August cattle looks okay to me. I really do. I, I think it's all right. But uh, it's got a whole 111. And I, I bought it 111.75. And I, I want to keep it above 111. So. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we've had a request to take a look at coffee. And as you know, uh, we're um, looking at coffee this morning. Look, just give me one second. And we see a really nice pattern here on this uh, JO, which is the ETF for coffee. It's right at a Gartley pattern. We'll just post this into the room here. And uh, I don't like ETFs, but uh, for coffee, it's probably not uh, a question. Mr. Z is asking me about the cattle. Why not June? August is what I like, Mr. Z, my personal preference. I've had a lot of luck in August cattle, so I stick with August. I know the open interest is not as big as some of the others, but I still like it. And uh, that's it. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Maybe I'll switch to another one, but I do like August, so who knows. But anyway, we gap down at 31.98 on this uh, coffee. Uh, it should hold. Now, remember, coffee's 
trying to make a bottom down at that level of 87. We rallied eight cents a pound and we backed off a little bit. So this is probably following through with that. This is a very low risk here in the uh, in the coffee because it's trading at 31.98. You only have to risk. Uh, about uh, three percent. You only have to risk about forty cents in this coffee to see if you're right. That's the good part about this. It's uh, pretty much. You'll see uh, what that's, that's happening. So anyway, that's it. I don't like. Uh, I just happen to like August. You know, you have some things. You know, I like December sugar. Uh, Ruby, I've already covered sugar. We're at that twelve twelve, uh, uh, dear. It's got to hold that level in sugar twelve twelve. If I have time here, I'll post it up because we uh, we brought that to our attention to our folks in the uh, here it is right here and we're back down here again you'll see this is where we're trading just about right now and uh, we're right in that area here we could get as low as 1190 so um, you know I think it's somewhere between 1220 where we're trading now and 1190 I like buying at 1190 because that's a retest of the 78 percent level that's the that's the best one uh, that I can see, so I certainly hope that that helps. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless, and we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow, boys and girls. From the offices of Duke & Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.